it's a, uh, a you can't uh, subscribe to us unless you have your full name and social security number, and we have to show it to everybody. Well, now, see, that's the thing. I wouldn't mind so much the full name if there was a way to make it private, but then immediately under their thing, it says, can not be private. Your name must be shown to everybody, which means it's only a matter of time before, like, Facebook, they start expanding everything that's in there. You must have this, and everybody must see it. <laughs> that's why I don't have a Facebook account. Yeah, um... Do me a favor so I can add you to the Google Docs so you're on the same page as us. Uh, just post... Uh, here, here, you already did that. Never mind. You already, yeah, I posted my email. You already did that. I didn't see it. Let me get it over here in the stupid doc. Heck, we're, we're bad-mouthing Google while using Google Docs to organize collaborative kind of thing. It's like, why don't we just get over ourselves and use Plus One to do this stuff? <laughs> ah. Are we recording now? Yeah. I just started it. <laughs> my email address. I, I haven't come up with a good enough email address, so I just let the Google name rise. Automatic name come up with it. Have you seen my email address? Come on now. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. It's like... Yeah. It's like, anyways, the obvious topic of this... Uh, uh, we're, unfortunately, we're not going to have more so... <laughs> well, this one. Maybe I can put in why the hell is uh, oh, okay. the number one hit film? I, 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 you know what? You're trying to make sense of things that don't make any effing sense right there. I cannot. Well, let's talk to what the F is uh, with the highlighted uh, one. You know what? If we're just going to do all audio, um, yeah, uh, hang up. But both of you hang up and call back. Matthew, you still around? Yeah. You're just really low for some reason. Uh, so I hang up now? should fix that. Where's this, this? Oh, what happened in the dark? I'm still here. Okay. I just don't see a face or your avatar at least. Let's see if it'll add him. Hello? Yeah. Okay, there yeah. we go. Yeah. Okay, starting over again with Audio Avatar Theater. <laughs> <laughs> and we have we have no face, no face, and no face, and no bit, no bit, no bit. <laughs> yeah, I may chime in later on. Yeah, well, he sent an email saying no go for tonight, which means he's either running ridiculously late or he thinks we won't wait on him. And anyways, he said no, so it's like okay. <laughs> I know he's busy with a lot of crap right now. Anyways. Back to the Google, I hate privacy, therefore I Google, yet somehow I'm not evil. <laughs> uh, it's almost no different than Facebook. Uh, actually, I would argue it is a little different than Facebook. Um, in some cases it's better, in some cases it's worse, actually. Yes, thank you for uh, copying. <laughs> uh, Call me! <laughs> Well, okay, the, the way in which it's worse is like when you go into the Google Plus thing and you look in there, it very specifically states, although most people probably miss it, that by any information you provide there is going to override your Google profile. It's going to take over your Google accounts. So whatever name you give there, regardless of what name you've given to your other Google account, this is now going to supersede it, and it's going to take over it. Uh, which means the only real way to keep this completely separate is to have a whole separate thing. And since so many people have Google services, Google forcing Google Plus to have a real name regardless is going to get rid of, ultimately, 
uh, because it's very difficult when you're using a Google service to move around from Google service to Google service to Google service to Google service without having to endlessly log in, log back, or have a dozen browsers. There are ways to do it, but they're deliberately making it cumbersome. They want the one Google account to rule them all. Uh, yeah, I hate one ring. Well, they're not the only company. Microsoft is doing the same thing, too. Yeah, I know. But the difference is, uh, when it comes to the Internet, Google really does own a lot of services. You know, it's... Well, they own Motorola uh, Mobile now. Yeah, I yeah, know. Maybe we should put on a tinfoil hat and go be like e Be like, oh, it, it's a conspiracy that evil. They're watching you. <laughs> No, and at the end of the day, that is exactly what this is about. This is shoring up their ad metrics so that they can tie their ad metrics to a physical human being to make it more monetizable. That, that is exactly what this is about, forcing by any means necessary. Yeah, it will ultimately fail. Uh, I mean, even the ad metrics I get all the time all messed up. I See, in my re not real name, I have ad metrics that... That, that are more real to me than my, my real account with my re my illegal name, and those ads are so messed up, you know? Well, and see, th th that's one of the things, like you, you were saying, you know, better, worse when it comes to Google+. Plus. Um, one of the things I think Google Plus got right that Facebook got wrong is the idea of, you know, circles. Ironically, this is coming from the company that doesn't want you to have circles when it comes to online. You know, that everything must be under the one Google umbrella, but then you can compartmentalize. You can't have a Google account for YouTube and your social media and another Google account for your email and business. No, your, your work and play must be the same person. <laughs> Yet... They want, yet they have circles. I don't. We all wear masks. Metaphorically <laughs> speaking. Uh, okay, Ben Stein. <laughs> <laughs> do you have? Do you have your money? Can I have the money now? Is of course. There's also the rumors that Google's making a gaming console. I think they are. I really do think that Google TV is going to become a gaming console ultimately. Well, uh, not Google TV. I think they're going to make their own little console. But there's, be, a, there's a Google TV set top box. It, it, it's not going to be like Apple, where they come up with a device that can only stream videos and have no hard drive. And everybody's saying, like, this is the greatest game console I've ever seen. No, I, I, honestly, if Google is going to do that, the way I think they're going to do it is some kind of a gaming uh, thing. They're going to try and be a competitor for OnLive. They'll try and make it another Google service. Well, that's not a hard contest. OnLive is a, fail it's a failure. Well, it's because of the way OnLive's doing it. You know, it, on live is not doing that correctly. <laughs> well, streaming video content, uh, uh, video game content through the internet as you play it is not a good idea. The technology just isn't there yet. It, Google knows this. Uh, actually, the text there, because on live actually works as long as you're not trying to do it in high def. The problem is there. Everybody wants high def because they have an HD TV and okay, it'll be high def, but you'll see less squares. You know. Oh, yeah, like, they'll see that different, well, I guess some, I, I guess we now have gamers that are like the video files, I need my extra half a frame, my eyes are bleeding, <laughs> uh, I, 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 I don't know. The yeah. best way right now is to have the video files on the person's personal computer, and then have the online information sent on a server, and then stream it that way, that's really the only way to do it. That's the way it's been doing it for a while. Yeah, right. but then that's not what the idea of going to the cloud is, that we turn these cheapy boxes into the equivalent of the $2,000 computers, so everybody's just buying cheapy boxes from now until eternity, and the servers own the world. Well, yeah. That's great how the cloud has, like, not that enough time, which ISP only has 60% of the time. That will also destroy the servers and the computer networks, and there won't be computers in the future. It, it, uh, that's the other problem I have with the cloud, is that it's its own destruction. It'll, it will kill itself. No, the part that will ultimately kill it would be the ISPs, you know, charging by the kilobyte, which is what we're ever going closer to, so that, okay, you can save $500, but spend 1000 <laughs> in overage bills. I will say this for Google, though, not to go out change the subject. At least they found their 
at least they found a way out of all those uh, patent lawsuits. Uh, which ones? Oh, oh buying so Motorola, yeah. <laughs> So they got them out of a lot of patent lawsuits. Oh, yeah, now they own that whole patent archive. Uh, it's a shame they weren't... It's a shame they weren't doing that earlier before things started to get banned in the EU and other places. Like the Galaxy Tab? Yeah, casualties of Google's ineptitude are not getting involved when they should have. Uh, I, I, it hurts more Microsoft more than it hurts Apple, though. Yeah, it really does hurt Microsoft a lot, but uh, Apple's the one who's trying to get rid of Android. Microsoft knows they can't win that battle. Uh, I would just stop HTC for now. What? Apple just seems to shoot themselves in the foot. I'm sorry, you're suing your own supplier. Oh, no, but Apple's never done that before. They never sued a company that made core software critical to their platform. They would never do that. Now they're suing something that makes core hardware critical to their company. Yeah, it's like that's not history repeating itself. We we saw how that worked out last time Apple did that. I'm sure this time it's entirely different. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, since we've jumped, well, it, it does the patents with the Google now holds does will put a kind of a cringe on uh, Windows Phone Seven. Yeah, but call me crazy, given that Google is simultaneously trying to take away people's privacy while trying to simultaneously avoid becoming under federal regulation, while simultaneously trying to become the dominant force in all hubs on the Internet, I don't think they're going to play that war at this time, even if they could, because that's the surest way to attract federal regulation and other things. Is people will it'll leave a bad taste in people's mouth. Google's done a lot of things. They have violated their "Don't Be Evil" philosophy left and right over the years, but never in a way that was stupid. Always in a way that was best for Google. Do you? For now, we were talking about they might have a gaming platform. We don't know. We're talking about within the the immediate future, like a couple, maybe about three months from now. Like we got the cruel joke from the Apple fanboys. He says that Apple's going to come with the Game Boy after everybody's done laughing their asses off. Well, if we're honest, that is what Apple is trying to turn the iOS platform into. No, uh, that's not what they were trying to turn it into. That's what they were trying to turn it into. You think Apple gets video games and they don't like it? They don't like I, I told you before, dude. Apple yeah, yeah, but you didn't tell, you didn't, you didn't tell the show that sucks this. A anyways, I, go ahead, this. Apple has had a history of not having any native IP video games of their own. They never had any. Even when they came up with the Pippin. I mean, who comes up with a gaming device and it has no native IPs from their own company? That was before the return of the Mighty Jobs. Hey. He said that Jobs said we're never entering the video game world, and he never met, and he meant it. And yeah, but he also said we're going to have uh, uh, three and look at the original, and that never happened. And look at the original iPhone and iPod Touch. But I mean, uh, okay, the iPhone you could do some stuff with, but the iPod Touch, what could you do with that? Listen to uh, music in a way that was less elegant than an iPad. To me, an iPod. But the thing <laughs> is, is that all you can do is just surf the web, uh, look at maps, and just play music and and look at a couple of video files that you had to upload onto the iPad because it had no camera. And also, yeah. I didn't really have a speaker. Yeah, and then it had a picture thing on there, that, which was useless because there was no camera. And most of the screen on the iPod, the original iPod Touch, was black. There was just not much to do with it. <laughs> it was just almost near worthless. It doesn't come from a Mac yet. It wasn't until uh, people started jailbreaking iPods and 
putting their own individual apps in there that uh, Apple came up with their own uh, app store and then they and then they got 30% of everything and they love that business model that it happened <laughs> well like I said it was forced on them Bill well, but I think the same. I think that I think uh, the same things happen with the gaming, though. When it comes to that, they have seen, even though they said, you know, and Steve Jobs himself has said, gaming sucks. I hate gaming. It's yeah. a multi-billion-dollar industry where the whole point of the industry is to sell nothing but magical pixie dust. That sounds right up Apple's alley. I'm sorry. That's what games are, magical pixie dust. <laughs> You know, it, it's they're, I mean they're hiring people from Nintendo and uh, and other gaming companies. It's it, you know Apple can say they hate games all they want, but at this point they know that's a way to make money off of iOS. It is. It's a comp- it's an argument they're not going to win because when they came out with that App Store, pretty much video games just came pouring in on that thing, and it was so much that open font. And I guess Plus Plus came out for the iPhone, all the iOS devices, and they ended up taking control of the App Store. Well, and, and for the new um, o- uh, online platforms and stuff that Apple debuted at their last thing, you know, there's an emphasis on gaming there, which is something historically you never would have thought you'd seen in an Apple keynote, but, you know, one of the points was games. You know? Yeah, well, what <laughs> happened was I told you. Open Faint and Plus Plus took control of their app store, and Apple had lost control of their own app store, and they realized they were in trouble. And they didn't realize this even when the developers came up and begged them to take back control of their app stores. And Apple said, no, it's all video game stuff. You guys just make whatever you want. And it just got too out of, out of hand, and what, that's why Apple did it. Wait, what, what What? developers were begging Apple to have more draconian control? Uh, EA, Capcom, all the big guys. Oh, they didn't like the level playing field aspect. Ah! They didn't, uh, like, <laughs> they didn't like it because it was out of control, though. I mean, open they don't like to and plus plus They don't like with uh, Fruit Ninja or anything, that's why. Uh, Angry Birds came in, came big on its own as an independent. A lot of independent games got big even through the Xbox. No, and that, that that's one of the few saving graces. Whether it's a draconian or an open environment, one of the advantages of these niche marketplaces and stuff that are coming up is that if you create something good enough and publicize it well enough or make it go viral, the little guy can compete with EA or Capcom or yada yada or you know whatever, which is a good thing and a bad thing because it uh, it's going to ultimately lead to some some crap down. We'll have a boom like we had in the late seventies, early eighties, where you had games like ET. Everybody close their eyes and pretend that never happened. <laughs> Oh, you mean that thing that's in a landfill somewhere all dumped there? <laughs> uh, okay, how many of you are old enough to remember E.T. the game? I don't remember yeah. E.T., but I heard horror stories. Yeah, it, 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 one of the big causes for the North American uh, video game crash of 1983. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's just, yeah, it, 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 but that's what ultimately happened. It was every, Everything was just too cookie cutter. That is the inevitable cycle of that. Uh, level platform is great as long as everybody's being created but when people just start to rape and plunge and, and that's actually started to happen even in the big game industry right now how we go that's happening in the web industry too no, well yeah it's the same thing with the web. all the websites are becoming the same template which has the same bugs used over and over again that the, nobody knows how to fix because they don't actually know how to make a website themselves <coughs> and the same thing with the games most of the MMORPGs that have come out in the last Three to five years, they're all. It's like, hey, wait, I know this engine. That's the same. Yeah, it, it, it's not even like they made a new plot. They're just like, well, this is our version of this one of four characters, um, and it's almost like if you've played one of them, you've played them all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mass Effect and Uncharted are both made with the Unreal Engine, the new one. Yeah, pretty much. It's no, all just Uncharted, designed and made well, and we yeah, don't. It is. We don't need 50 billion game engines, but you need to write original content 
you, you, you need to actually write a good story to go with it. If you're just going, oh, let me copy this other thing and make the elves blue or, or whatever, you know, it, it's the same game, just reskinned. There, there's no no different anything there. Yeah, because uh, it, the popular engine back then was Quake. Sorry, that no. was dumb. No, that's okay. Well, no, when the Quake engine, Quake, what is it, Quake 3 is going open source, so that's like that may be good or bad. Quake 4. Quake, is it Quake 4 or is it Quake 3? I have to go look Quake at it. Quake 3 went open source like 10 years ago. Okay, I'm thinking of Quake 4 then. I'm sorry. Anyways, wrong Quake. Other Quake. Quake 5 is not going to go open source. Oh, of course not. <laughs> because it's owned by uh, Bethesda now, and Bethesda has decided to screw everybody. They want everybody in direct X programming. Oh, yeah. Well, now, see, that's the thing. One of the things the industry desperately needs for the desktop side right now is a good open core, if not open source engine, that is compatible. It's it's, it's platform agnostic and modular. So All right, that's on that's LGPL. Well, it, 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 you should have compatibility for DirectX, and an LPGL would, would do it. But you uh, would allow that, but you need to not be bound by DirectX because that that basically breaks platform agnosticity. I'm not just talking about Linux here. I'm talking about making it as well on Windows, OS 10, Linux, and BSD. So it doesn't matter what computer someone has; they can still give you money for your game. <laughs> and that's what Bethesda wants to destroy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Bethesda is dead, definitely on Microsoft's side. But then again, Microsoft. Wants to come up with a more connect-like gaming console. Yeah. 